Hi guys, it's Mike at Raycom HQ. I am joined today by our RF guru, the one and only Mr. Piers Easton. And he is here to talk about the WYSIWYG MRK980. So Piers, what is the MRK980? Well, the MRK980 is a new receiver from WYSIWYG. It's a rack mount receiver. Uh, it has two channels in it. Each channel is true diversity and it's mains powered or optionally 12 volt DC powered. Okay, so what is unique about the MYK980? I understand there's new, new and exciting features about it. Yes, absolutely. Um, it's an entirely new platform from them. Um, first and foremost is its bandwidth. Wizicom is well known for mm. covering wide frequency ranges and this they've re excelled themselves here. Okay. Um, what they've given us in this receiver is the entire VHF licensable spectrum, yep. the entire UHF licensable spectrum, mm -hmm. and the entire licensable DME spectrum. Yeah. Okay, so DME, some of our customers and viewers might not know what DME is, so Piers, did you want to maybe expand a bit more on DME? Yes, uh, DME is a brand new band that's being licensed in the UK. It's used by aircraft. Yep. It spans from 960 to 1162 megahertz. Okay. There's a few gaps that you can't use in the middle, but essentially it's a vast swathe of, spe of virgin spectrum that you can use. Mm -hmm. um, it was uh, uh, found by Ofcom as being the most suitable after they had a look at uh, uh, what they were going to do after 700 to 800 megahertz went away and mm -hmm. obviously that was going to put a squeeze on users of, of UHF spectrum so they were looking around and starting at 960 megahertz um, actually is close enough to yeah. 700 megahertz that yeah. the, the, perform the RF performance in terms of range and mm -hmm. loss through people's bodies which are basically sacks of water as we all know um, is, is not significantly worse yeah. uh, than it is at UHF. And to that, the advantage of noise floor, the, uh, the DME spectrum, uh, you know, as long as you use channels that aren't being used by aircraft going overhead, and as long as you use preferably the gaps between DME channels, yeah. um, of which you know, I think you could ha have a whole video about, but as long as you, 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 it's used properly, the noise floor is, is so much lower than mm. you get in UHF. And this obviously means you get a better range, less dropouts. You don't have to worry about DA, uh, about, sorry, you don't have to worry about uh, UHF television yep. uh, transmitters underneath you. Yep. Um, so yeah, it's, it's it's altogether a better thing. Yeah, great. And I understand that not only wideband, but it also deals and copes with uh, transmitters and narrowband. Yes, yep. this is another um, feature that Wizicom have introduced, which is wide narrow. Wide is the traditional bandwidth that, that yep. everybody's been using for, for years, which is a 200, 200, 200 kilohertz channel. Yep. Um, all of the digital transmitters and analog ones use that as, as a default. Mm -hmm. uh, they've introduced a 100 kilohertz channel, yep. uh, which not only allows you to get twice as many frequencies into the same amount of spectrum. Yep. You know, on any of the frequency bands, that's the same for DME and, and uh, and UHF and VHF, um, but it also improves the sensitivity of the receiver. The receiver effectively, it's like, it's like doubling the power of your transmitter effectively. Yeah. So a 50 milliwatt transmitter performs the same way as you'd expect a 100 milliwatt transmitter to perform. That's because by reducing the RF bandwidth from 200 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz, the amount of total noise within that window on the spectrum, if you like, mm. is reduced by half. And because it's a power rate ratio, that means 3 dB lower aver average noise, so the all range is improved. Wow, this really is a versatile receiver then. Uh, is there anything Certainly else is, worth yeah. of, of note? Is there anything worth mentioning that we haven't mentioned yet? Uh, yes, I mean it, it has some very useful features like uh, frequency diversity. Okay. Um, in really critical applications you could mic somebody up with uh, two mics on two different frequencies. Yep. Then it will pick not only the best antenna from the diversity but the best frequency from the two. So right. The, the, uh, you know, the chance of a dropout is, is substantially reduced. Uh, one other thing that it's got actually, which is, is brand new in this uh, mm -hmm. receiver, is noise squelch. Now, oh. whereas previously one would set the squelch based on an RF level, you would do a scan and you would say, well, what's the, what's the RF level on these different channels? And then yeah. you would choose a channel to receive on yeah. and you would set the squelch just a little bit above what the noise floor is yeah. so that if somebody's transmitter goes out of range or you turn it off, you don't get a burst of noise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but with the way this works, it, what it's actually looking for is the signal versus the noise. Mm. So if the noise floor goes up, 
Um, um, the Squelch effectively goes up and follows it. It's just looking, is, is, is it going to be a good quality sound? Yeah. And if it, if it reaches that threshold, and you, there are three separate thresholds you can have as to when it makes the decision as to when it's good and bad, okay. um, it, will, it will mute the audio. So if somebody turns up with a, a, you know, like an electric drill or something and suddenly creates a whole load of uh, yeah. RF interference, yeah. it, will, it will mute um, rather than allow that interference to, 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 to open the Squelch. Well, that's pretty clever. So, this will continue to work with other manufacturers. Um, yes, so that's another 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 thing, which is something else that we've become famous for is the mm. multi. They call it multi-vendor compatibility. That's a bit of a mouthful, but <laughs> effectively, what it means is that it will work with ma other manufacturers' transmitters. Yeah, Sennheiser, uh, Electrosonics. Yeah, Electrosonics. It'll work with Electrosonics if, if you put Electrosonics into mode three. Mm -hmm. It will work with Sennheiser, both um, Evo and, uh, and standard Sennheiser. It'll work out the box, mm -hmm. sure, um, and audio limited analogs. Mm. Um, so yeah, so really, it is really versatile. Yes, absolutely. Well, well actually, one other thing um, that is absolutely new to to, to this receiver uh, at the rear, which we'll have a little look at in a minute. Yeah. It has a slot which you can put an expansion module into. Okay. And actually, there's some really exciting things going on there. For, firstly, um, the, you, there's a module that enables you to daisy chain receivers. Yep. Uh, and not only does that allow you to daisy chain the monitoring, so if you've got a rack of receivers, mm. you can plug a pair of headphones in um, and, and press the, button, the, the monitor button on any receiver and hear that receiver. Cool. It, it, it okay. daisy chains the audio. Yeah, very um, useful. But uh, even more exciting, it, it, it can da you can daisy chain receivers in different zones. So let's say, for instance, you're you're, maybe you've got a, a tennis tournament yep. and you've got uh, multiple um, tennis courts with antennas in each tennis court. Mm -hmm. You could have receivers in each of those courts on the same frequency. Yep. And as long as they're linked together via the expansion uh, module, it will pick the best signal. So instead of having to have faders on your for, for, for the sound guy, having mm -hmm. faders for each area, yep. it will auto switch for you and, and it will just pick the best receiver that's getting the best quality signal. Again, not necessarily the best signal level because it uses the, the signal quality yes. measurement. Whichever is getting the best quality, it will route, route that to, to the output. Are there any other modules? Absolutely, yes, I was leaving the best till last. Mm -hmm. um, some, some of our viewers might be familiar with Wizicom's RF over fiber kit, yes. which is used extensively in motorsports like Formula One and mm -hmm. uh, uh, big uh, open tennis tournaments. Um, which enables you to remote the antennas over very long distances. Now, one of the modules uh, that they're launching uh, enables you to basically plug a fibre straight into the receiver, which oh. means that the, the, the receiver itself becomes the fibre receiver. It then converts that to RF in the receiver and it receives it in a normal way. But then it routes the RF out, the, the loop through output at the back, which means you can daisy chain multiple receivers. Um, so it effectively it gives you the, the local end of a fibre net network um, within the receiver. They're the two modules that I've just mentioned are the ones that are available now, but being a standard format for module, they've got all kinds of other exciting modules in development at the moment. Oh, wow. So, and other than the module, what are the other connectivity options? Are there many options available to us? Yes, yeah, so probably it's best if we take a look around the back. Um, so around the back, um, let's we'll start with the RF. We've got... Uh, uh, the antenna inputs for the diversity antenna input, then we've got a loop through output where mm -hmm. you can daisy chain receivers without using antenna distribution unit. Yep. Um, we've then got uh, the main and auxiliary analog outputs, the main yep. being your, your fit main feed into the mixer. Yep. The auxiliary uh, is, a, is, they call it PTT, it's where you can press a button on a transmitter or on a cable plugged into the transmitter and you can tell it to s swap the audio over to a different output yep. if you want. Um, you can you can program in a matrix how you want it to behave when you do press the button, but that's the most common use. So you might want to the presenter might want to take themselves off air and talk to the director, yeah, and or just issue some expletive. Or something. <laughs> yeah. um, and you've got uh, quarter inch jack outputs um, as well for for connectivity in the analog domain. You've then got uh, AES uh, an AES three output mm -hmm. um, for, for digital audio, and on top of that you've got. Uh, dual redundant Dante outputs. Ah, um, yeah. So you've got uh, quite a lot of options there. Pretty much everything is covered. Everything you need. Yeah, and it's got a, a, a couple of Ethernet ports for remote control mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, and sync for, for digital audio. And then you've got an option here for 12 12 watt DC input and a standard mains input. So that's uh, as you can see, it's quite busy on the back. They've uh, they've not left anything out. Oh, that's great. Should we have a quick walk through on the front panel? 
Yes, I suppose so. Being an engineer, I sort of <laughs> tend to focus on the back panel first. Let's take the lid off, shall we? Uh, <laughs> on the front here, we've got um, a couple of displays for the two receivers. Obviously, they're, they'll show you what frequency it's on and various other settings. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to do a, an in-depth video of the menu structure um, yep. soon, so look out for that. Um, these are very attractive OLED displays. We've got uh, standard rotary encoders for the menu selection. Then we've got a number of uh, push buttons for such things as, as sync, uh, uh, scan, yeah. um, uh, audio and yeah. uh, channel. So you've yeah. got immediate access to those most frequently yeah. used menu yeah, items. Yeah, shortcut, yeah. Um, also on the front you've got a monitor output for headphones. You can select which receiver you listen to. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, that's about it, really. I mean, um, it, there are an awful lot of uh, very powerful things you can do with it that are, that are in, in within the menus. But as I say, that's uh, for another day. Yeah, sure. So, thank you very much, Mr. Piers Easton, our in-house RF guru. We'll uh, update you with another video about the features and a bit more in depth of the menus on the uh, Mark A980. And uh, yeah, that's it for us. Thank you very much. Thank you.